saw the southern disaster and he has gotten over what was a disastrous 22 month run he went from 24 and 0 to his current 26 3 and 1. Here's the run of his key fights that have defined the career. He blew away Michael Grant, Duncan Dokawari, then he flopped against Monty Barrett, lost a close decision to current world champion Sergey Lajovich, and he was fairly game but had a rib injury against James Tony. Then came his night of redemption two months ago. It was April 14th. He took on the big Brit gold medalist Aubrey Harrison, and there were finally glimpses of the old Dominic Gwynn. He worked more consistently, and in the final round, he even let loose and scored. It was a very welcome change and much needed. I told my manager before before we took the Ali Harrison fight that um, I just really wanted to get a win under my belt. Um, like I said, the, the previous fights we've been in, you know, I really haven't heard my name announced as the winner in, in a year and a half. And I just really wanted to fight any fight. I just wanted to fight just to get a win under my belt. And the Ali Harrison fight um, done that for me. And just like Audley, tonight he faces another tall athletic southpaw. It's Washington, D.C.'s Tony Thompson. Tony, 34 years old, 6'5", solid 238 pounds. That's 12 pounds less than his last fight. He's 27 and 117 knockouts. He turned pro at the late age of 28. His lone loss was a four-rounder to unbeaten prospect Eric Kirkland. That was six years ago. Here's his last five fights, and you see a win against former title challenger Vaughn Bean Thompson was convincing in telling us how prepared he is for this big moment. And now he wants to convince everyone else in the sport that his 27 wins aren't a fluke. This fight, this one fight can validate the rest of my uh, 27 wins, uh, even though I don't need validation. I know I'm a good fighter, but in the public eye, I need this fight. I've been waiting for this fight. Uh, you know, this fight is probably going to change everything for me once I win, because then it'll let people know that I'm a serious heavyweight. Dominic Wynn, Teddy Atlas has trained against Dominic Wynn, and of course, Teddy Atlas has trained a southpaw heavyweight champ. Thus, he is well equipped for the fight plan. For Gwyn to win tonight, there's several things that he has to deal with. Three things to be exact. First of all, he has to know that he's dealing with a southpaw in Thompson, and he's got to move himself to his left side, outside the lead right foot of the southpaw, and where he's away from that power hand, that backhand of the southpaw. The other thing is Thompson, very tall. If he uses his height, very possible Gwyn is going to have to slip that jab and use two or three jabs and take steps to close that gap. And finally, Thompson is known for giving up his height, fighting small sometimes. If he does that and he's right in front of Gwyn, look for Gwyn to use that southpaw killer, that lead right hand, bang, right there to score and maybe follow up. All together, look for these things to add up to a win for Gwyn. For Thompson to get the upset win tonight, he has to do something that he doesn't do a lot. Use his height. Fight like a tall man, not in close like a short man. It starts with a southpaw jab and it starts with distance. Using his jab, keeping a certain range where he can use that jab to keep Gwyn out there, set up shots off it, and also let Gwyn do some of his work for him. Let Gwyn force his way in and you notice when Gwyn jabs, he'll lean forward a little bit. That's the spot for the left uppercut, the right hook. For Thompson tonight, look for him to use that height let Gwyn work against himself by forcing his way in and use those long arms to make Gwyn pay a price. Tony Thompson, Gwyn. 34 years old, biggest Tony. moment of his career. Dominic Gwyn trying to get back. John Shorley is the referee. Here's good, okay. For the WBC and NABO titles, give me a good clean fight. Sounds good luck. So, you know, I'm going to add one thing onto those tips. And that one thing that I'm going to add on is the thing that's always hovering over the head of Gwyn. When he gets inside, he must make a choice to punch, not get tied up, in this case, by the long arm Thompson. Duly noted, the ring experience brought to you by Just for Men Hair Color. You see the numbers there. Keep in mind, Gwyn had the better amateur career. Really, Thompson hardly had an amateur career. Just a cup of coffee to the late start of his career. Gwyn had Calvin Brock just beat him out for an Olympic spot. Well, Thompson kept talking on the tape, trying to convince everybody that he truly was desperate, that he was truly prepared for this fight. Well, if he was a guy 
maybe talking to the police, you put a polygraph on him. The polygraph for me to see if he's at least telling the truth in physical terms is his weight. And Thompson's coming in 12 pounds less than his last fight three and a half months ago. The lightest weight for Thompson in about four and a half years. So I think Thompson was telling the truth at least as far as his physical preparation and desperation to get ready for this big moment. One of the things that really helped him out in terms of losing the weight is that he worked with Barry Hunter at the Bald Eagle Rec Center in Washington, D.C. Of course, Barry Hunter, a familiar name because he is the trainer of Anthony and Lamont Peterson. Well, so far, Thompson, along with the help of Hunter, is showing an understanding of a fight plan to stay on the outside a little bit, use that southpaw jab, try to set things up, and take steps back to keep those gaps there and to set up that power hand as he just did, the left hand of Thompson. We talked about in the fight plan that Quinn needs to move to his left, Joe, just for that reason, to avoid that backhand of the southpaw. Right now, it may turn around. Gwynn may make wrong right by just being too talented, too physical for Thompson. But right now, Gwynn moving the wrong direction. He's to moving his right. to his right. Now, this is interesting, Teddy, because obviously that is just right. boxing 101. When you fight a southpaw, you want to be on the outside of that front foot for as the conventional orthodox fighter. And it's something that we saw time and time again in his fight with Audley Harrison. And I went and I talked to Joe Goosen before the fight. I said, Joe, what was the deal? We had this. We had you on the air with Teddy. You went back and forth. You went against conventional wisdom. And he said, and we may do it again because he feels that the southpaw is preparing for you to do what is conventional wisdom so let's buck the trend I don't care if he's preparing for you to do the conventional wisdom what the southpaw is really doing is hoping that you will move the wrong way because that is where he's in position to land that backhand that hand where you can get power that left hand in the southpaw position where you can turn that left foot and you can shift your whole body into that punch he cannot throw that punch and he cannot land that punch if you're moving to your left We'll talk more about that as it is one of the keys to the fight laid out in Teddy's fight plan as we continue. This is the end of round number one on Wednesday Night Fights. Wednesday Night Fights brought to you by Just For Men Hair Color. Round two of our heavyweight main event. Dominic Wynn coming out in the black trunks with that red and gold trim taking on the six foot five Tony Thompson. Teddy in that first round we started the discussion about going against the trend of a southpaw and as Gwyn time and time again keeps moving to his right you talk so much about the positioning of those front feet with southpaw what are you seeing here well now they're in close but when they get out of range again seeing Gwyn centered right in the middle of the southpaw right in position looking down the barrel of the gun the gun being the left hand the power hand of Thompson being in position where Thompson if he does throw that punch Gwyn is right there again Joe Goosen the experienced trainer of Gwyn may say that we don't want to do what the Southpaw expects but you can do exactly what the Southpaw expects if you do it properly and you move to your left outside that lead foot and away from the power hand and there's not a darn thing the Southpaw can do about it it's physical dynamics it's physical principles that if you move to your left against the southpaw you're going to stay away from his power hand you're going to get a better angle for your jab that's your work, that's your work, that's and you're going to give yourself a little advantage in those dimensions interestingly enough joe goosen trained a southpaw world champion in joel casamayor so he's been on the other side of that fence again it may not turn out to mean a hill of beans if Gwyn moves to his right and Thompson does not unload that left hand, does not score with it, and Gwyn continues to allow himself to get inside, be the more physical man, the man who has more dimensions to him, the man who uses all that amateur experience that he accumulated in being a three-time national amateur champion, then everything else may be moot. Thompson tries to get off there. 
Slow jab from Thompson. See, when you're the taller man, a lot of dimensions open up for you. You use that height. A little tripping over the feet, and that's going to happen. Tripping on the feet will happen with a southpaw and an orthodox fighter because if you peek at the feet, you see the southpaw with the lead right foot and the orthodox fighter win with the lead left foot. Those feet quite often come close to each other and touch each other. And sometimes you will see one guy stepping on the other guy's foot. And you'll see lack of balance, people falling this way and that way. Gwynn trying to come in with the right hand, coming to the end of round two. There is Joe Goosen with his charge, Dominic Gwynn. Let's look at the fighter focus on the 31-year-old. Had a big amateur career. He made his way to the Boys and Girls Club in Hot Springs, Arkansas, as a 9-year-old. 320 amateur fights later, then he turned pro. And the 34-year-old Tony Thompson, raised by his grandmother in Washington, D.C. Proud father of seven. Got a late start, really stumbled into boxing at the age of 27. He's trying to make the most of it now, seven years later. In the best shape that he's been in in recent years, in the biggest fight he's ever had. Southpaw trying to fire off the jab. Quinn able to get to the inside of the left hand of the body and now comes in behind the jab. Again, you see the advantages of being a tall man when Thompson uses that height. Right now, Gwynn doing a better job of closing those gaps and being in where he wants to be in punching distance that suits him with the shorter arms where he can take advantage being in close and nullify the long arm Thompson a little bit. But when you're taller like Thompson, you can see if you use that height, Joe, there's so many portals of opportunities that open up for you. You can use that jab. You can keep Gwyn at the end of it. You can set up your backhand, the left hand. You can step back and cause Gwyn to reach in like that where you can get kind of opportunities. There's so many things that can happen when you use your height. You get it on the front end by leading with your jab at the right distance, and you get it on the back end when the taller man starts to get frustrated and it's just natural that he's going to start leaving openings, getting desperate and reaching. And that's what you want to do if you're the taller guy. Straight left hand. Gwynn tries to counter. Right now, the fight looks like a matter of who's consistent with their style, with their abilities to a higher degree. Is Gwynn consistent on getting on the inside and working and taking advantage? of being the shorter man, maybe the stronger man inside. And is Thompson consistent at using that height? Some moments here where Gwynn's just not working, where if Thompson did work, he'd be much more convincing to the judges. That's not what you want to see if you're Joe Goosen in the corner of Dominic Gwynn. The shorter man getting inside and not moving his hands. Again, Gwyn on the inside, he puts his hands behind Thompson. You don't need me to tell you when a guy puts his hands behind the fighter, he's not looking to punch. Well, that's been the wrap with Dominic Gwynn during this little tailspin of his career. Not working enough, being inconsistent. I got you, I got you. Showed a glimmer of hope against Audley Harrison, got the win. He's still looking to let loose here against Thompson. Kansas Indy 300 is Sunday at 1 Eastern. Indy 500 champ Sam Hornish Jr. and Danica Patrick head the field along with Elio Castroneves for the Kansas Indy 300. 1 Eastern on Sunday on ABC. Dominic Wynn. 2003, TKO'd Michael Grant. Decision, the Olympic medalist Duncan Dokawari, and then the wheels came off. Now, He's trying to rev up this 
new start to his career. Clean round, fellas. Finished up strong against Aubrey Harrison in that 10th round. He finally let the hands go in winning that fight on Friday Night Fights back in April. But so far tonight, we have not seen him get back to that form. Of course, early on here, this is scheduled for 12 rounds, only the start of round number four. Tries a one-two there. Now he works on the inside. Again, the key word here is consistency. We're not having trouble getting close. What he's having trouble doing is being productive when he gets in close, being productive to the high level that he would want to be. In other words, moving those hands consistently when he gets close to the taller Thompson. Not getting in, doing very little, and then getting outside again where he has to deal with those long arms again. Thompson with a three-punch combination. See, too often it's like Groundhog Day for Gwynn. He gets in close, Joe, the way you would expect him to. But then he goes back outside all over again where he has to once again get in close to do any work. If I was Gwynn, I would never allow him to watch that movie. No Bill Murray in the household of Dominic Gwynn. Once again, Gwynn gets in close, then he goes back outside. Just watch. Gwynn is inside, now that's where he wants to be. But is he doing what he needs to do as he once again goes outside and eats some leather? And again, when they are separated, I believe, just my small opinion, that Gwynn is moving the wrong way to his right into the power hand or the direction of the power hand of Thompson. And again, just to repeat what Joe Goodson said, he said, we're going to trip him up. We're not going to go where they expect us to go. But the best way I can answer that is to say, hey, if you were getting ready to play against Shaquille O'Neal, would you say you would plan on keeping him out of the paint? You wouldn't say we're going to let him in the paint because he expects us to keep him out of the paint. Exactly. She'd say, no, we're going to do everything we can to keep him out of the paint. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But that's the plan we're going to have. Let me step back. Thank you. If you're fighting a southpaw, I believe you need to move away from that backhand. The opposite of the way Gwynn is moving right now. Again, from Thompson. I got you, I got you. Five seconds. Then Gwynn gets in close. No trouble there, but not moving his hand. One third of the way through. Dominic Gwynn, Joe Goosen talking things over. A very, very important fight for both men. Both men trying to take advantage of what is described as a wide open heavyweight division. One more. All right, here we go. Yeah. Anybody can win this thing, I, I, and uh, I dig I'm just as good, if not okay. better, than all, any of the top heavyweights out there. So all I need is that one win to put my foot in the door, and I'm going to be like a cat burglar through the window. I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to prove why I was once uh, held the American um, heavyweight dream, uh, the, the next American heavyweight champion. And I'm, uh, I think I'm back to that, and I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, take my position. You got me? He gave hope to Joe Goosen and his team back in April when he defeated Audley Harrison. Gwynn described that, saying it was like a prisoner being released after jail time and that he's 1-0 in his eyes, trying to just build up a new undefeated record. You would think coming off of that Audley Harrison fight that he would be a little amped up, juiced up, and a little more in control of this fight. But here we are in round number five. And the six foot five Tony Thompson still fighting at range, still utilizing that size, and we've let the scene win, let loose. The headshots in that fourth round, Thompson a 19 to 8 advantage. Most of that work being done with the jab. Teddy Atlas's scorecard through four rounds, three rounds to one Thompson, 39 37. Again, Gwyn having no trouble getting close where he wants to get with the long arm Thompson. His trouble is right there. As you see the referee break him before Gwyn does any punches. Right, 
You have a three rounds to one. I think Tony Thompson could have even solidified that score better by just working a little more as Gwynn has given him so many opportunities. Now he puts a two-punch combination together. Right. Now that's smart work by Thompson. Staying on the outside, taking little steps back to keep that distance, to try to get Gwynn maybe to reach a little bit where he can create some kind of hole, and then tying Gwynn up. The physically more able guy on the inside before he can do any damage. Quinn doing a better job of moving his hands a little bit to the body, to that long, lean body of Thompson on the inside. But again, not consistently the way you would like to see with a guy with all the amateur background of Gwynn. Seen him get underneath that jab of Thompson and then place the right hands of the body. You can do even more of that. You know, in this country, in this business, in all the different vocations that we watch, the different sports that we watch, we always talk about different skill sets being so important, whether it's speed, whether it's jumping ability, whether it's power, whether it's being sound technically. But the one skill that sometimes is not talked about enough it's just the skill of making the right choice under pressure. The discipline, that's a skill. That is something that equates into success. That is something that sometimes is not thought of enough. And to me, that's the one skill that Gwyn needs. As you see him allow a clinch once again inside with the taller Thompson. That's the one skill that Gwyn needs to really have to fulfill everything else, to put together all these skills that he teases you with. And that's the skill to make the right choice, to discipline himself under pressure, to move his hands consistently when he's inside. Just moved the right hand that split the guard of Tony Thompson. Coming to the end of round five, Wednesday night fights presented by Just For Men. Six foot five, Tony Thompson waiting for Dominic Wynn in the center of the ring to start this sixth round. 34 years old, 27 and one. Using too much water on him. Come on. And they're going to tend to wiping down the face okay. of Dominic Wynn. Let's go. Over here. Referee John Shirley calling for that. Wynn's first fight since that win over Audley Harrison April for Tony Thompson. He has won 23 straight fights. Lost a four-rounder really early on in his career to Eric Kirkland, who was a well-thought-of prospect at the time. You know, how many times do you watch guys in sport? Actually, in anything, a guy who maybe graduates number 200 in his law class and he becomes a top lawyer. A guy that you wind up calling an overachiever. And you look at him and you say, well, dude, he didn't have the most brains in the class. He wasn't the fastest guy on the field. He wasn't the guy who could jump the highest on the basketball court. But he was a guy who always got the most out of himself. And to me, that is the talent that sometimes we forget that we all have the chance to possess and to execute with. And right now, it's not a talent that Gwyn is showing. He's not making the choices to punch inside. So the taller Thompson makes that choice for him. A sharp right hand, then a right uppercut, and now Thompson gaining confidence offensively. And guess where he's landing? He's landing with the left hand. The left hand that we've been talking about, that we believe in our small opinion, that Gwyn is moving in the wrong direction. Where Gwyn is putting himself in peril, in jeopardy of getting hit with that left hand by moving to his right, not to his left, as you traditionally like to do with a southpaw. The left uppercut, then a right hook. Now Gwynn went to the body here. But Thompson, a lot of confidence here in round number six. He Thompson. trained very hard. Thompson, Thompson is scoring well. Well, he hurt Gwynn a little bit there. Gwynn has a good chin, but he was hurt again. Not hurt by a punch. Hurt by a left-hand punch as Gwynn continues to spit into the wind, so to speak, and move the wrong direction with a lefty. Thompson said, I'm going to prove that this 27-1 and one record is for real to everybody. He lost 12 pounds since his last fight. Says he's in the shape of his life and mentally focused for this big opportunity, and he is taking advantage against Dominic Gwynn. 
and he's doing it very simply. He's doing it by using those long arms at the right distance, but he's even doing it in Gwyn's territory, in the wrong place, on the inside, by showing that talent, that talent that a lot of people do not think about enough, the talent to make the right choices, the choices to throw punches, go to work, go to work, and that is serving Thompson very well. Another good left hand moments ago from Thompson. He is having a heck of a round as Gwynn tries to fight back in these closing moments. But a big sixth round for Tony Thompson. <laughs> Dominic Gwynn and Joe Goosen talking things over after it was a rough sixth round for them. Tony Thompson gaining momentum as this fight goes on, Teddy. And again, just watch where they are. They're on the inside, and who's moving their hands? Second the taller, longer man, who's supposed to have to stay on the outside to have success, but he's making a choice to punch on the inside, you and he's having water. good no, no, no. success. He's in charge, Joe. He's Round seven, the they are scheduled the for 12. Such an important say, fight for both men. Tony Thompson, he said he feels desperate. Well, a desperate fighter is a dangerous fighter, and right now, he is a danger to the future of Dominic Gwynn. You know, Cus Damato, one of the great boxing people of all time, used to tell me all the time in the gym, when you get on the inside, if you don't punch, the other guy will. And it's been that simple so far. Gwynn has gotten on the inside, but when he has not punched, the taller, long arm Thompson has. You invite a man to get confident when you get inside with him, especially when you're the sh shorter man. You get into the quarters that you want to be, and you don't take command. A man like Thompson has gained confidence when he has seen that kind of behavior from Grimm. Grimm now trying to split that guard of Thompson. Can't do it with that right hand. Now not throwing on the inside, they go back to range. Thompson establishes that jab, six foot five frame of Tony Thompson. Punch track numbers, these are the jab landed by round and you can see the output by Thompson, the effectiveness. Joe, this is a mental game so, so much. If you just make it physical, when you would think should be the guy in control with all that amateur experience, he's a Decent puncher, physically very well-rounded in many areas. But it's the guy, Thompson, the tall string bean, who so far has been making himself execute a little bit better. Just put yourself into the mind of Thompson, who's the underdog in this fight. And when you get inside, watch. On the inside, you're the one who's doing the work with the guy who's supposed to be the master on the inside. That has to breed your confidence. That has to make you grow and feel like this is my night. This is my guy. I own him. Only 21 minutes so far this main event. He has grown up indeed. Right. I just watch right now. Put yourself in the mind of Thompson. Just look. He's a taller guy. He steps out. Keeps his range pretty good. Now he's inside, pays no price on the inside. He's starting to walk down the sh guy who's shorter, the guy who should be walking him down. He scores on the inside, he gets back outside. What do you think's going on in the mind of Thompson right now? He's saying to himself, I don't have to worry about this guy. I can handle this guy. I'm better than this guy. And he has the confidence of knowing that he pushed himself during training, dropped 12 pounds. He worked with Tom Browner and Barry Hunter, who's with the Peterson brothers, and he has all the confidence in the world with the team as to what they turned him into. Listen, don't you get it now? Well, Barry has brought a lot of um, sharpness to my game. Me and my original trainer, who I'm still with, Tom Browner, we've put the we've put the original plan together, the original. Um, you know, the, the original uh, steps that we've taken in my career, but Burry has come in and highlighted those steps and those plans. And, you know, and uh, I put him, Tom, and a bunch of other trainers together, 
and they've created a monster. So I like to I like to call them my mad scientists because now they've created a monster together. Mad scientists did a you nice job. Dab, dab, straight brick to the back. Hook body, hook head. You heard the combination they want to see right there. The late blooming Tony the Tiger Thompson. Round eight. Can he stay with it and pull off the upset against Dominic Wynn? 12 round fight. Still plenty of time for Dominic Wynn to turn things around. You know, we talk about the mental element of this game and the biggest component of that mental element is the word confidence. Quinn, when he gets inside, does not always behave, as you see right there, allowing himself to...